so I have a clicker now, um, which makes me very official. <laughs> so uh, hopefully it works. Sometimes this does not. So we'll see what happens. So thank you for coming to the fourth recital of my new music project. Um, we have five wonderful pieces for you today. Um, and uh, you'll be hearing from most of the composers. Um, so hopefully you enjoy. Uh, for those of you that don't know uh, about this project, I in the height of the pandemic in 2020, uh, winter 2020, I sent out a call for scores for clarinet, clarinet narrator, and clarinet electronics. And I asked if they tell me a story. And I got over 90 responses. I got 90 compositions. Um, one of the things I noticed about uh, the submissions was there was a vast, diverse um, group of composers composing for clarinet. Um, but nobody was really tapping into that. And so I decided to create this project. Um, at the culmination, I hope to present at this, at the clarinet convention conference um, in Reno this summer and ask other professional clarinetists to join me so I'm not doing six recitals in one semester. These recitals hopefully will be going on all over the world um, and uh, we'll be able to accept even more compositions. So that's what this project is about. Um, shall we get started? Yeah. Uh, okay. Here we go. Uh, all right. Are you failing? Wait a second. My name is Ryan Jones, and I'm a composer based out of Lansing, Michigan. I wrote stuff for my roommate at the time, Ben Baldwin. It was near the beginning of the COVID-19 lockdown, and performances were canceled pretty much across the board. It was tough to find motivation to compose, not knowing when or if a piece that I wrote would, would be performed. So we had the idea to work together on this piece. I'd write some sketches during the day, and he'd play through them at night, which I'm sure our neighbors loved. 
By the time we finished the piece, we weren't roommates anymore, but I still hope to capture the experience of those early lockdown days that we lived through together. Being stuck spending all our time in a tiny apartment together and being stuck in an unprecedented situation that seems scarier every day. Thank you, Sarah, for organizing this performance and thank you all for listening. Thank you. 
it's turned off, or if it's just my black screen. It's working. Good. I'm so skeptical. <laughs> Um, all right, so the next piece is super cool. Um, this is both that one and the next piece. They were premiered during the pandemic virtually, but this was the first live performance of them. So that's why it's designated live premiere. The next piece was based off of a painting. I'm going to let the composer talk about it. Um, but this has been a real joy to get to uh, know this piece and um, kind of learn the techniques to play it. I am a sophomore at the Jacob School of Music, studying composition and performance. The piece you're about to hear in its album of the night is a soul for that piece inspired by two songs all around the world in the touch. This piece was composed almost exactly a year ago as part of the Zayn of the Day's Zayn Symposium. The general structure of the night moves you through the painting, starting with the outer colors and moving towards the center. The piece to start out is light and glittery, the middle is a little dark, and it is a mix of both light. And it has a mood that is calm, relaxing, and for me. And here is the point. Enjoy. Sorry, right, I couldn't hear that. Here's the painting. You can look at it all the time.
take me just a moment to set up for the next piece. Is it requires three clarinets. I think this might be the first time I've played E flat clarinet on this stage. I'm glad you're here. <laughs> you share this with me.
The title of the piece is woven because it is woven from the fractal. Thank you, Sarah, for performing the music. I hope you all enjoy the performance.
So the volume doesn't matter on the next one for us. Um, I suppose it's in Portuguese, but there are subtitles. So um, the next composer, this is a particularly um, cool piece. And when I first looked at it, I was like, I really want to play this, but I don't know how to sing and play at the same time. And that was something that is uh, in this piece. Um, there were actually a lot of techniques in here that I was like, oh, I don't know if I can do that. But it uh, turns out I can. <laughs> 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 try, try, and can. <laughs> so uh, uh, I'd like to let her speak on this. But I'm good. Boa noite. Espero que estejam todos bem. Eu sou Bruna Santander, sou brasileira, residente em Portugal e aluna do curso de composição da Universidade de Janeiro. E por isso que essas três miniaturas para clarinete que estreiarão essa noite nesse, nessa iniciativa maravilhosa. Eu como isso é grata à doutora Sara. A narrativa que sustenta essas, essas miniaturas começou a se formar com a minha busca por reencontrar minha própria infância através dos meus filhos. Ah, estando eu tão longe de casa, acabou se tornando uma tarefa ainda mais profunda. E por que não de protesto? A primeira minha filha, Pia, foi escrita sobre notas que os meus filhos tocavam de ano no piano. E o seu nome é, pois, uma maneira carinhosa de se referir à criança, da qual eu cresci ouvindo, mas não sabia até então a origem de tal palavra. O que me lembrou, o que me levou a uma reflexão ainda maior e uma busca mais profunda de entendimento sobre o tupi enquanto uma língua extinta, o tupi antigo, porém muito presente no dia a dia dos brasileiros. E principalmente toda a riqueza cultural que o povo indígena brasileiro luta em preservar. O que nos leva à segunda e terceira miniatura. Pitanga Koi Biara. Ah, do Tupi Antigo, a criança dona desta terra. É em português, chama se pisa. E, finalmente, Kurumi, que também é uma maneira carinhosa de se referir à criança. Mas já essa foi escrita sobre uma canção, uma cantiga de Caça com Fogo, dos índios chavanos. Uh, espero que vocês gostem. Um muito obrigada, doutora Sara, pela rica iniciativa e belíssima interpretação por dar vida à música. Muito obrigada e uma boa noite. So there's uh, some words um, here in an indigenous uh, language that I thought <coughs> I've been practicing my pronunciation, but I thought I would let you hear what it sounds like for someone who speaks that language. So, that's how it's supposed to sound. I'll do my best.
Hands are full paints, wasn't it? Yeah. So the next composer um, gave me something to read rather than making a video. Um, and I highly recommend looking up his website because it's super cool. And he has pictures of trains from all over the world. Um, so he's originally from um, Japan. Um, and he's studying, uh, he's working on his PhD in composition at Duke University. Um, this is just such a fun piece. And uh, I hope he doesn't mind, I'm just gonna share this. Um, he submitted two movements and then I'm meeting with all the composers. So I, I get to, to meet with them and talk with them and learn about the piece and learn about them um, and just work really hard to kind of get a representative performance of what they're looking for. And um, right before my meeting with him, he sent me another movement <laughs> and was like, here's the first movement. I only gave you the second two. <laughs> so um, I had a surprise movement in this one. <laughs> Um, that I learned. Uh, and it, it's just been a really uh, wonderful experience learning this. This has been a really cool experience learning all of this music. I guess this is the last piece. Um, uh, there are two more recitals, so uh, we're, we're nearing the end. I can't believe it. <laughs> um, but uh, here's what he says about this piece. Pop Up Brahms and Pop is a fun piece with twists the second movement, Brahms E flat major clarinet sonata. I'm a profound lover of the organicism of Brahms, but I also love randomness embedded in human emotions and daily life. With this composition, I hope I realize a nice balance of spontaneity and organ uh, organicism. <laughs> I hope you and Brahms love this piece. So. Uh, Hmm. I guess I should thank you all for coming. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, particularly tired today. Um, I don't know why. It's probably because winter is still happening. So um, I really appreciate you coming and supporting me and all of the people at home. I really look forward to performing this piece in the last year's cycles, so thank you. I'm a read obsessive.